now on KPIX 5 and streaming on CBSN Bay Area. A KPIX exclusive interview with the Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi. Her take on the Taliban takeover of Afghanistan and what happens next. The efforts to control the coronavirus and the California recall. Is she ready to work with a Republican governor? Right now, our one on one with the most powerful woman in Washington. And good evening, I'm Juliette Goodrich. I'm Alan Martin, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, joining us now live from the KPIX 5 newsroom. Madam Speaker, thank you for coming to our station, albeit a little bit socially distanced, but thank you for being here at KPIX 5. Thank you, Juliet and Alan. Nice to be with you. Thank you. However distanced. Yes, yes exactly. Well, let's start uh, with what's on everyone's minds right now, the situation in Af Afghanistan, and certainly after witnessing the confusion and the chaos. Um, the big question right now, should the Biden administration have had a stronger U.S. military presence for the transition? Well, first may I just say that I commend the president for the action that he took. It was strong, it was decisive, and it was the right thing to do. We should have been out of Afghanistan a while back. Uh, but now we are, unfortunately, uh, one of the possibilities was that it would be a, dis a disarray as it is. But that has to be corrected. And it is my understanding from the assurances we have received uh, that the um, military will be there negotiating with the Taliban for the safe exit of American citizens and friends, people who have helped us, our allies there. And, and people work in the nonprofit sector, but also not just U.S. NGOs, but those who have worked in Afghan uh, uh, NGOs as well who would be targets. And those people, those folks were all crucial to our effort there, but the U.S. withdrawal uh, left tens of billions of dollars worth of U.S. military equipment in the hands of the Taliban. There were helicopters, guns, ammunition. How much has that raised the threat of future terrorist attacks, this well-armed Taliban? Well, I do believe that the president's decision was based on one that reduced uh, the prospect of any attack on our homeland. And the president has made it very clear to the Taliban any assault on any American entity or person would be met uh, forcefully. So uh, the, this is what happens when you withdraw. You, some stuff, uh, some equipment is left there. It was thought that that would be used. Uh, it was hoped that that mm -hmm. would be used by the uh, Afghan military to defend its own country. The fact that it did not and could not was all more the reason for us to leave. You know, even if ending the U.S. military presence in Afghanistan was the right decision, as Pre President Biden insists, many are still questioning how it was carried out. And so that does bring us to viewer questions that we've been mm -hmm. asking. So let's go to this first question. Will there be a congressional investigation into the withdrawal from Afghanistan? And that is from a viewer. Well, the, our chair of the Foreign Affairs Committee uh, has announced today to our caucus that there would next week, early next week, uh, be a hearing on this subject with the highest level of officials in the Biden administration. Uh, that is con Congress's role, the role of oversight, and that will, that will take place early next week. At least it will begin then. I know we only have so much time with you, so I want to switch topics to the pandemic. COVID-19, despite a huge push across the country to get everybody vaccinated, there are many folks who are just dug in. They're not doing it. So how can you reach people and convince them they need to get a shot? Well, it, 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 one of the most articulate voices I've heard on this subject has been, uh, and actually more than one, uh, but the voices of those who were in denial of vaccinations mm. before and now are pleading with their friends to be vaccinated and with the public to be vaccinated because uh, they are feeling the pain and the uncertainty of COVID. And it's a, a vicious virus. It's resourceful. It, it's, as it is transmitted, it is mutating and into other variants, which again, prolong it. Uh, but the sooner everyone is vaccinated, uh, the better, of course, Absolutely. that's self-evident. Okay. But it doesn't seem to be obvious to some of the people who still no. refuse. And I'm sympathetic if they have medical reasons or just uncertainty, but they've got to weigh the equity, not only for their own safety, the safety of their children, their families, and really for the good. And we've noticed, we noticed you're good. wearing your mask, too, or you have always. it below you. Yeah, so you're always. Right. always. Yeah, if we do take it one step further, do you see there being a national vaccine mm. and mask mandate? 
Well, my, many of the mandates spring from the communities. I'm very proud of the work of our mayor, Mayor London Breed, and what she has, and, and now the numbers are going down again in San Francisco because of precautions that are in place, masks indoor. That's why I always have it ready. <laughs> the ready right. was just indoor, except to take it off for this, uh, this um, interview. But the, um, the, the, the when you say mandate, it is a word that is frightening to some people. But the fact is, we need to have vaccinations for our children to go to school. There are other uh, mandates for, uh, I had to get a mandate because I ate too much Bud's chocolate ice cream 30 years ago from a store where somebody uh, got sick and they said everybody had to get, vac get uh, have a, a tetanus shot. I don't like getting shots, but you had to get the tetanus shot. They were going to come after you. We're going to come get you if you didn't get the tetanus shot. Well, we don't have that kind of, uh, shall we say, enforcement. But we should have moral suasion. And people should understand that for the good, common good, they should get vaccinated if their own health uh, makes that possible for them. I don't know that you will see a requirement nationally. But what is sad is when you see governors acting in ignorance of science. They're, they ignore science, and they, they don't believe in science, and they don't believe in governance. So if the governance says you should wear a mask because science says that will help stop the spread, mm -hmm. there are no to both, and those two no's do not make a yes. Well, Texas governor right. tested positive, too, and he was anti-mask. So, so the learning curve on this thing for all of us mm -hmm. has been very, very steep. How are we better prepared? Because there will be a next, another pandemic, the next one. Well, we will have to we'll be prepared by having a, a, a supply chain that is in place uh, to have more education in, in place for people to understand the sooner they participate, the better, uh, to have real uh, truth spoken to people without a president of the United States saying it's a hoax, ignore the whole thing, and it's going to go away, we'll all be to church together. At Easter, as President, the former president said last year, uh, but there are certain things that we can do in preparation, and that is with the necessary supplies, uh, with the uh, ongoing conversation that we have about it, and in some of our legislation that is coming forth, we'll have the pandemic prevention uh, initiatives in, in them. Mm. It, it, right. it, it, it was in place under President Obama. Obama it was right. eliminated last time. We have to put it back in place. Let's talk about a big state issue right now. It is the recall election. Are you surprised that Governor Newsom is having to fight for his political life? President Newsom has been a great governor of California. Uh, his ratings are very high, as a matter of fact, high even for a Democratic governor in California, well into the high 50s because he's been a great governor, and he has dealt with so many crises. Now we have COVID, we have forest fires, we have so many issues, and he has responded in such a very positive way. Not only that, he has taken the initiative early on uh, for the people of California. So I have no question that he, if he were up for re-election, he would win. Uh, what is uh, um, necessary to point out is that the Republicans are so enthusiastic about this recall. The Democrats are like, what's the problem? They have to be as enthusiastic to get out the vote. People are in pain. This has been a hard couple, a year and a half. Mm -hmm. People are in pain. We have the forest fires. We have COVID, of course. We have so many uh, 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 ramifications of that, whether children in school, people not being able to go to work and the rest. So they, we have to be sympathetic to their needs. The governor has been. I'm so proud of initiatives he's taken about school lunches for all children, health care, a broader application of uh, availability of health care for many more people in California, enabling us to have children go back to school in a safe, in a safe way. Uh, opening up more opportunities for testing, tracing, treatment, mm -hmm. vaccination, so that people can go to work. So it's just adjusting to end the here and now, but a great governor overall. Uh, well, me... So we'll all be working very hard to make sure that people get out the vote. It's only a conversation unless you own the ground and get out the vote. 
So uh, we well, have no dove, surprises. Madam Speaker, sorry to interrupt you, but let me dovetail because let me share with you and our viewers a recent mm -hmm. CBS News poll that shows Republicans, they are very motivated yes. to get out the vote, remove Newsom. Democrats, not so much. So how is it Democrats are going to rally and get their supporters out there and, and actually do the voting? Well, we have many more Democrats than Republicans, for one thing. Uh, but again, I, I think that um, you asked me, did I was I surprised? I don't think it many people took the recall seriously uh, because it, it, it's, it's not for a serious purpose. But the fact is, it exists. So we do have to get uh, more enthusiastic about turning out the vote. And that is, in, and the governor's making a tour right now, uh, calling attention to the fact that voting has already started. Uh, so my message to the, Amer to the people of California is, uh, this can be a dangerous thing. Uh, a recall. Uh, it is part of the system. We respect mm -hmm. that, but don't ignore it. Yeah, you know, let's not forget Congress had to work with Arnold Schwarzenegger when he won the recall election in 2003. Those running against Gavin Newsom are much more conservative than he was. So how do you foresee working with someone who's much more aligned with Donald Trump? Well, that's, I don't think the people of California will go with that, but I appreciate your pointing out uh, that this is kind of a Trumpian attempt on the, uh, mm -hmm. uh, the recall, and that's what the choice is, uh, a better future with our wonderful governor and our, our, I mean, just Joe Biden in the White House, so much opportunity for us to do things for the people in a very strong way. And uh, the governor is, again, has a clear vision about the state that he loves. He knows the subject. He knows the state very well. He knows the issues. He has a plan. He thinks strategically to get things done. I'm very proud of, of Gavin Newsom, Governor Gavin Newsom, and that I have no intention of working with a Republican <laughs> governor because we must make sure that that does not happen. That would have ramifications in the United States Senate. Uh, should there ever be an opening, okay. which I don't right. foresee, but nonetheless, they, uh, well, a lot of things happened that nobody foresaw. Been, so now we're in whole new territory. Let me just part of this was to get a viewer question. Mm -hmm. So I know we want to get those to you. Puerto Rican Joe writes: People suffering from COVID are getting huge medical bills. Why doesn't Speaker Pelosi support Medicare for all? Your response to that? I support health care for all, and as a uh, I have proprietary interest in the Affordable Care Act, being one of the people who wrote it, and I believe that it is a better benefit for all. If you look at uh, what the benefits are of the Affordable Care Act, I do believe in expanding the benefits of Medicare, and we, that's part of what we are doing in this new bill to, for hearing, for vision, for dental, uh, for, for our seniors. But I do think that the better plan is for people to be able to have their uh, insurance come through their workplace, something they're used to, and the rest. And that uh, our goal, I think, is a common one, health care for all. Speaker Pelosi, Alan and I have had a chance to ask our questions. <laughs> and our viewers. And you've heard from our viewers. <laughs> so uh, we want to give you an opportunity to talk about what's on your agenda as you head back to Washington. I know that there's the infrastructure vote, but why don't we give you a couple of minutes to kind of uh, lay out what you're, what you're thinking about right now. Well, I appreciate that opportunity. Thank you, Juliet. Thank you, Alan, for your questions. I uh, appreciate the viewer questions as well. Right now, when I go, we go back on Monday, I'll go back Sunday for our session on Monday, uh, we will be voting uh, for the people, the Build Back Better initiative that is the vision of President Biden, shared by the Democrats in the House and in the Senate. Uh, the bill that was passed, the bipartisan bill, is a good bill, but it's bipartisan in that, but it is not in inclusive of all the vision of the president. We want to build back better, to do so in a way that involves many more women and uh, minorities, people of color, and the rest in the ownership of, the, of the, our economy as we go forward. To do so in a way that is recognition of the assault that the climate crisis has made on our environment. We see the fires here, the floods there, the hurricanes and all the rest uh, that are a threat but are not acknowledged in the infrastructure bill. So whether it's about building the physical infrastructure, that bill goes a long way. Building the personal infrastructure of of workforce development, of, of child care, or, or, uh, universal pre-K, family and medical leave, to our, our, our friend's question earlier, issues like that, 
uh, that uh, build that better because it again builds an economy, it builds a society, it builds the infrastructure in a way that is for the future, for the children. My motivation in Congress has always been about the children and what we are doing in this additional bill, uh, the reconciliation bill, but it's called Build Back Better, is uh, for the children, for the people. And so it is, a, it is many priorities for our veterans, for housing, for education, uh, again, climate issues and the rest. Uh, we must improve on what, was hap what happened in a bipartisan way. And the president said, I want to find as much bipartisanship as possible, but I'm not confining my vision for the future to what that is. We have to do better. So well, that's what we're going back to do on Monday. And we know that, yeah. that you're going to work hard at it. We also know you're bringing back members of Congress early to get things uh, rolling, get them off their summer recess. So we wish you the best, Madam Speaker. Thanks it's not so a much recess. For it's a district work period. People are working very